Welcome to session six. In this session, we will talk about rooms and keys. This picture shows a house. Now a house consists of many rooms. When you first walk into a house, typically you walk into a living room. And from there, you might enter other rooms in the house. These other rooms could have smaller rooms. Or you might not need a key and you might just want to travel straight from the living room perhaps to the dining room. In this scenario, a person can walk through the front door and walk into the dining area, but they need a key to enter the first room and a second key to enter the second room. Notice to enter the second room, you need both keys. Okay, what has this got to do with chatbots? The house is a lot like our chatbot and each room can be a collection of templates. Let's see how this works. Let's say I have a collection of three templates here and they all refer to matching drinks. To make it into a room, I put room colon with the name of the key for that room and end room, like so. So these three templates now define a room. And the key to the room is just drinks. Let's see how this works. So I have this micro topic now. And if the user asks, do you like coffee? Well, the bot will say IDK because he does not have a key for this room. Similarly, for other questions like water or cocoa, these rules would have matched but the user does not have a key into this room. Once you create a room, the user needs a key to that room for those templates within the room to be used. Let's take another example. Let's say I have a microtopic for food and similarly a microtopic for drinks. These topics are both very similar and really just for illustrative purposes only. I have two rooms, two different rooms, one called food and the other called drinks. And I would want to put each one of them into their own file. So the food microtopic would go into food.m and the drink microtopic would go into drinks.m. I'd also have then another set of templates to decide which room to enter. If you notice, there's an additional K rule, and this rule simply adds a key to the user's keychain once that rule matches. So I've got the first template which adds the key food to the user's keychain if that template matches, and the second which adds drinks to the user's keychain if that template matches. Now you'd add these rules into a single file called bot.m or whatever the name of your chatbot is. The last template is special because it matches any sentence. Such a template is called a catch-all template because it catches all of the user's responses. Be careful to put the catch-all template last of all among all the templates in your chatbot. So you can think of bot.m as a living room, which gives you access into other rooms in your house. So in the same way, bot.m allows you to acquire keys for room food and the room drinks. Now, you must also be careful how you include these various files. You want to have food and drinks above bot because bot contains the catch-all. And of course, this is found in main.m. Now, let's see how the bot responds when the user says hello. At this point, there are no keys in the user's keychain. Since hello is not in the first or second templates, it will be caught by the catch-all, which asks the user, do you want to talk about food or drinks? If the user says food, then the first template matches and after that the user is given a key food. Now if the user asks you like cheese 
because he has the key food, all the rules in the food topic will also be matched and the user says, love cheese. Okay, let's continue with this conversation and let's say he says now, change topic. Now, remember, he has already the keys food. So, of course, because change topic is not in the topic food and it's not in one of the first two rules in bot.m, the catch-all acts again and it asks the user, do you want to talk about food or drinks? At this stage, the user's keychain only contains food. He says drinks. Now this matches the second template and the user acquires the drinks key as well. So he has two keys now, food and drinks, which means he can enter either one of those rooms. Now if the user asks, you like coffee, you think that because coffee is one of the drinks in the drink topic, the bot would say, I like coffee. But that is not the case. If you look carefully, the food topic comes before drinks. This means that the rules in food will match before the rules in drinks are matched. And what this means is, it will match like coffee in food, and the bot responds with, I'm sure, which is not really what the user expects. To fix this, what we need to do is to change the key so that we add a back command. Notice the back has a dollar sign. It is not a reference and it's not a type reference either. It's a command that forces the user to go back to the previous set of keys that he had. So if he had, for example, just the food or just the drink, back would take it back to an empty keychain. So in this case, we are asking the user to forget whatever he had and just to add food. Similarly, we do it for the drinks template. Now what happens if we replay the conversation is when he asks to change topic, the keys at this stage is just food. The bot will reply with the do you want to talk about food or drinks, which is the catch-all, and the keychain still contains just food. If he now says drinks, because the K rule has a back, it will then remove the food key and add in drinks. So at this stage, the user will have just the key to drinks. In which case, all of the rules in the food microtopic will no longer be active. So when he asks, do you like coffee? the bot correctly responds with, yes, I like coffee. You can also use K with guards. I would recommend that you not use this too often. In this example, you have a memory item called repeats. If repeats is one, two, or three, then the first pair of A and K rules would be used. In this case, the bot takes the user into the drinks microtopic. But if the repeats is four or more, and the second pair of A and K is used, and the user is taken into the food microtopic. Again, I recommend that you use this technique very sparingly because it can lead to a lot of bugs. You can also use K with the semicolon alternatives. So in this case, I have a catch-all, and the catch-all shuttles the user into one of two different topics, either food or drinks, and it does this at random. This technique can be used for discovery or to give your bots more character. This ends session six. I'd like you to complete the lab for session six and also the exercises. Good luck.